All right, hey guys, what's up? So today we're gonna be working on a little quick project. Well, I always say a little quick, it's usually not that quick. I decided I am going to be putting a honeycomb mesh uh, sort of grill where the comb grilling is, at least on the lower part of the Elantra, which we'll go look at in a little bit. I already bought the piece online. I'll link it in the description. It was like 11 bucks for the whole piece. Which I think at least for my car is good enough for if you cut it out right for the bottom and then the top. I might just leave the top, but uh, We'll just see how the bottom looks first and I'm hoping for some increased uh, airflow in there as well because I noticed some areas which we'll look at as well are sort of blocked off because the manufacturer tries to essentially guide the air coming in to just hit the front radiator, um, coolant radiator first um, and, and just kind of like uh, push it through that. So by reducing that surface area that's, that it's traveling through the wind sort of focuses it on that one area which, I, which is good. Um, but yeah, um, it's also an aesthetic thing. I guess it's, that's mainly what it is for. Um, I already, once I bought it, I used some uh, SEM adhesion promoter on top of it because it's sort of like a, it's like a satin. It's a little bit glossy, but not as glossy as I would like. So I, I hit it after that with SEM, uh, SEM adhesion promoter. I hit it with three layers of uh, top coats of uh, clear coat. So it just kind of increase the gloss and durability. And um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and do the install. So we're gonna go over like removing the bumper. To note though, on removing the bumper, I have a, uh, these tabs that I bought, which I'll link in the description. These tabs are a bit more easy to undo. Normally it's like a screw fastener. The ones that I got are actually like, just like a push tab and it fits exactly the same. But yeah, guys, we're gonna go over removing the bumper. So you guys will know how to do that on the 2014 Hyundai Elantra or in general, essentially all fifth generation Elantras. Um, and you guys are gonna know about uh, removing that lower grill if you want to do the same install yourself. So I hope you guys, uh, of course, are staying close to God, you know, saying prayers for your family and friends, because um, especially in these times now, um, essentially just like it says in the book of Revelation, we're gonna be having all these things happening. And um, this event that we have now, which is kind of unforeseen in our time, um, you know, people always say, you've seen stuff like this happen before, but I feel you know, there's some definite significance with this because it's a more modernized age, you know, back then it was different. Um, so this might be the lead in to more things to come. So you have to pay attention, and really uh, discern the spirits as the scriptures say, and really know, um, pay attention to what's going on now, especially and everything after this event. Okay, so first things first, always wanna remind you guys, wear iPro. That's like the minimum, and if you're grinding particles or sanding, wear uh, some sort of uh, uh, face mask as well. And make sure you guys just stay hydrated, so always bring your water bottle when you're on the job. Tools that we got here that we might be using, um, right here is a caulking gun, and in it is the liquid nails right here, or the fuse it. Got it at Home Depot, you can get it there too. This is to secure the original framing that you guys see there that we're gonna be taking out along the edge where the grill is, where I'm just highlighting right there with the end of the caulking gun. Um, and of course, uh, zip ties. I have plastic and steel, other things you guys might need. Drill, of course, uh, for any sort of uh, repetitive task or uh, really taut drills, but if not, you know, we have hand tools for that. Um, and specifically, uh, a nice flathead because once you upgrade to those nice um, pop-out tabs instead of the screw type, which are kind of a pain once they get old, of course, this car is uh, almost 65,000 miles, so of course that's the case, and that's why I switched those 10. Again, linked in the description, much easier. You just get under and pop them out, and much more uh, streamlined. Uh, paper towel for cleaning, alcohol, you might need tape. Um, little uh, magnet pan, we've seen this before when we did the spoiler. That's for screws so we don't lose them. Don't wanna lose anything OEM, and gloves. Um, if it's uh, really dirty, but I don't think it'll be that dirty or oily, you guys might want. These are really hard to open with one hand little bit of grease but it's nice heavy duty scissors some regular scissors might work which I also have which if these are more suited they're sharper um, but much lighter uh, for cutting the mesh to shape but these are meant for cutting thick wire and I'm sure they'll just cut through that uh, plastic mesh much more cleanly and nicely so I would use these I don't know what you want to call these they're kind of like uh, not really gardening but uh, something they're wisp though uh, drop forged and they're the V10s. So that's what it says on there. So if you want to look it up, I don't know how much they are. It's a hand-me-down from my dad though. Here's the actual grill mesh itself. Pretty tight weave. As you can see here, it's like my, you know, fingernail about that size, you know, really small. 
Um, if it looks too tight, I'm probably gonna try to get a order a bigger one online. But this is actually the problem with shopping for these honeycomb pieces online, because they always give you a measurement, or sometimes they don't. And even with the measurement, sometimes you just think, oh, that looks like about looks about right, and actually see that. And of course, mine is the uh, ladder case where uh, it, they didn't say a size, so I'm just like, that looks about right. And of course, sometimes they show illustrations of like a big style sort of big mesh, which you see on like the Audis and all that for their front grill and um, that's not the case so uh, hopefully it looks you know not not too bad um, of course we're gonna look over that once it's installed um, but yeah so first things first guys I'm gonna pop your hood and we're gonna go over the points that you guys are gonna have to remove now to do your bumper you have one here again these are the non OEM or sorry they are from Hyundai but these are for retentioners that uh, or fasteners that maybe came on the same model but different year Mine had the screw type, which if you have the 2014 Limited, um, you probably have that same one too. But with these, it's just nice because you just get the uh, flathead in and that's it. So they're really tight, but otherwise, essentially same principle, same design, but there's like a screw uh, design on there, which is, I mean, these probably will get old too, but you know, I got another 50,000 for that. So really, really affordable. It was like five bucks for all of them. But that one there, you have one here. Uh, I'm, I was short one and a missing one, but this is not necessarily important because this is more for the air duct. It's not really structural. These ones at the ends and in the middle are structural along with everything else on the bumper. So if you'll have one there, you'll have one there. So that'll be it for the top. So of course that's a total of five on the top that we're gonna remove. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got all these removed now. You're gonna have uh, quite a bit of those on the bottom there, which I'm gonna show you first. And then you're gonna also have to remove some other parts as well. So in regards to the bottom, you're going to have one there, as you can see, sorry if this is not showing up too good, one there, one here, keep going along the bumper, and you're going to have one more, uh, which for some reason this is a screw, which I uh, still have. I think I was one short on my, uh, when I bought the new ones, uh, so I kept two screw ones at the other end, I see the one at the other end, so you have three along your first lip on the left side or right side, and then you're gonna have three along the other lip on your other side, basically going from here to the back. And then you're gonna have one, one straight in the middle, one there, and one there. So a total of nine for the whole bottom bumper. And again, if you have the, and again, if you have the screw style, you'll see the screws. If not, um, you'll have, you might have push tabs like this, which I upgraded to and I recommend um, upgrading to. Uh, so yeah, this is the, this is the screw style of the same style uh, retainer, but you have to do that and it's sort of a pain because if they get old, it doesn't always screw out and you have to put your fingernail under and catch it and pull down while twisting so the threads move. Right, this is a much better design here, so upgrade to those. Besides that, there's only two more uh, bolts you actually need to undo and they're actually real screws and that'll be the last thing to get the bumper off. In terms of retainers, you're gonna have retainers right in here underneath the wheel well. So if you're coming up to your wheel well, it's about here, right at the seam. And if you look under, this is having trouble focusing because the exposure, you can see it right there. Uh, it's wanting to focus on, yeah, it's right in there, in that little spot there, that little divot. And there's one there and there's one on the other side. And that's an actual screw. And usually what I'll do is I'll turn my wheel, um, what is it, uh, inward. The, uh, the side that I'm working on. So if you're driver's side, turn your wheels in that way and you'll have better access to screw because otherwise, especially after my upgraded wheels, which are a bit thicker and fill out the wheel well a bit more, it's, you know, you can see how you're not gonna really do that. You can use a shorter one, but they're kind of tight and you want more torque, so you want that length. Um, and essentially that's it. And you can actually remove the bumper after that. So let's go ahead and remove all that and then we'll take the bumper off. All right, guys, so we just removed our fender upper fasteners, all the low, all nine lower and all five upper, um, but of course in my case only four. And essentially what we're gonna do is just pull along the bumper here and you can see it's already separating. So you have clips along here and I think there's two or three clips along the headlight housing. You might have to push this kind of hard. Sorry, pull it, don't be afraid. You know, it's gonna come right off. Um, the only thing, if you're working on this alone, um, I would release this side leave it on then release the other side once that's off this is going to fall off and you don't want to like have it fall over or whatever because it does do that or bend and then scratch it all up um, these aren't scratches they're just bugs because you're probably thinking man won't worry won't matter for you man because your car is uh all messed up but i always keep my car clean but i have a thing where if i'm doing projects i 
I don't clean it until after because it's gonna get dirty anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I always take pride in cleaning my vehicle, which is rough, guys. All right, just to remind you guys, if you have the OEM fog lights, you will want to unplug this here, these connectors right here, which if you don't want to, if you're not comfortable about letting uh, this sit on the ground while you do that, you can always reach in and uh, like this from the wheel fender liner and from the fender and unplug it into unplug. Really simply, just pull on the two tabs on the side and give it a little bit of a wiggle and it'll come right out. You can do that to both sides. Again, if you have the OEM fog light set up, um, then you can fully remove the bumper. What our car looks like without our bumper. So uh, here's the inside of the bumper. Um, I do want to show you guys this. For those of you who are wondering where the, the screws go, uh, at least for the front, because again, the front, we followed the patterns directly on the canards. So this is where they go. As you can see, completely harmless. Just goes right in the plastic. If you're worried about someone touching them, you can always coat these with some silicone after, but I'm the only one working on this car, removing the bumper. Again, I don't have to worry about that safety issue. We're gonna be swapping out headlights for, or fog lights for non-OEM ones, because I've seen some on AliExpress or eBay from KMP Trade that follow the same style, but along the inner side, you'll have like a daytime running light strip, which of course matches our um, our strip lights as well um, along with the regular fog light but yeah here's the part we're gonna be removing right here guys so we have the upper assembly here which is with our Hyundai badge we got some foam here which is kind of interesting this is like what you call it. like if you get like a small front impact um, it's gonna absorb some of that uh, shock so you're just gonna have like a bumper issue and not anything with the front uh, collision bar but yeah, we're gonna be removing this lower part here. We can already see some, see some screws. I didn't look at instructions online from HE Manual, so I figured this would be pretty straightforward. It looks like we've got some plastic tabs we're gonna push in. But yeah, guys, we're gonna go ahead and remove this whole thing. This looks interesting up here, so we're gonna remove the foam first, which looks like it has its kind of like serrated metal holders. So we're gonna do that first, see what we gotta remove for that, and then we're gonna see how a test fit looks by just laying the mesh over there behind here and then looking at it for the front and see if it's really for us before we go any further. But yeah, guys, let's go ahead and get started remove the foam part you have a piece of plastic here which is pretty flimsy which attaches to that it, as you can see this part seats out and this uh, outer extrusion here from the main uh, lip is what prevents it from moving more forward here's it removed and then you just have these little metal retainers which essentially the teeth um, the being metal going against the plastic here create a friction which holds it in place and in which case you just pull each side of the plastic and you'll just see the the retainer or uh, teeth pull out and then this falls off so make sure you keep this and don't lose them otherwise you won't be able to secure this as easily we have uh, screws here which we're gonna remove and then we also have fasteners here and these fasteners are helping to secure it in sort of uh, doubly fine there what I'm gonna do is once you have all four corner screws are start from one of the corners either end and give it a little bit of tug and then you're gonna want to use a I'd recommend some body panel removal tools because this plastic this is all plastic here so if you use a flathead it might be a bit aggressive and you might peel away at some of the uh, lower lip of the clips here which actually help retain it you want to pry upwards and then while pulling that'll help it slip over this is actually very tight they have so many of these that they didn't want this thing moving at all and uh, including with the screws it kind of seems overly engineered I don't know but uh, that's just how I see it but yeah so let's just go ahead and do that for all of this uh, it's gonna be a while all right guys, so I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, just got the whole look here, with, especially with the canners. Without the canners, no, but the black from this really balances out the mesh here. And then might even do the mesh up here. Maybe something cool like take off the badge and then lay it on top of the mesh and get rid of all the chrome. And it'll really go good with the canners. But I think this is gonna look good guys. Of course this is a bit of a space, but it would be sitting flush here. I think I'll use these tabs here and glue around that. And of course the adhesive you can always peel off later. Nice customized look and complete flow to that area as well. Let's go ahead and start with it, guys. Great. Gonna go ahead, use a screwdriver here, and we're gonna remove our license plate. And look at that, it's kind of dirty, and why not clean it up? So good thing we brought the wipes, or the towel, and the alcohol, and we're gonna just clean that up, get this area nice and wiped under here, because don't really get a chance to uh, clean well. So yeah, let's continue. You can see right here with the license plate removed, you have a nice space to work with and the benefit of the mesh is that because we can see what's behind us we'll make a good marking and because it's already wrapped around with some tape we're gonna 
tack down the edges and that way we get a good round fit. That way our measurement is accurate. So with each edge tacked down, giving ourselves a nice uh, curve, four pieces of tape. I didn't mark the bottom here because we're gonna go down the bottom, but you can see all along here, I use the grease marker where I'm gonna cut along, leaving about an inch to two, uh, an inch on average, but about two inches, between an inch and two inches around each edge. So that when we cut, we'll have enough material for the top and we're gonna have some material to work with on the inside to tether down uh, to stuff or glue. So let's go ahead and get uh, started on the cutting, guys. We're gonna do our cutting now. Might have small pieces of plastic coming off when we cut along the honeycomb mesh. Make sure you guys got your eye pro. And I really recommend using these type of heavy duty, I guess you could call them gardening shears or scissors, uh, the Wiss V10 drop forged. And we're gonna go ahead and cut it out. Guys, we just finished the cutting now. And as you can see, it's along the edge here and it has a nice fit along the whole unit. And so now we're gonna go ahead and use the existing holes in the mesh, stick it on the clip joints, and then if we need to, or well, we are gonna use some adhesive and use some adhesive around there, getting the liquid nails. So let's go ahead and finish the installation. Sorry about the glare. The cutting, a little bit of ties here and there. We got something decent. Um, it is a bit tricky to uh, go around these pieces here, and it really doesn't fit actually perfectly at all. Um, but with the foam piece here holding up top and the adhesive we're going to put along the bottom here for these pieces because that's where we really want that stability. Um, yeah, that's where we really want to sit tight on the lower lip here, whereas the upper lip it can kind of have a little bit of a gap there. As you can see, you can actually just put your hand through there, which isn't really good. Um, but again, this is just super, super finicky, guys, uh, getting this to work. So with a little bit of adhesive along the bottom edge there, um, underside it doesn't show there. It's a little bit sloppy, I know. Use the top fastening screws found at each corner. The mesh hold in there, and you can see that here. So that's sitting behind that. Got the foam piece here, and that makes sure the top part of the mesh sits flush against the top. And put our little holders in. Kind of got to bend it inwards like a spring. The foam, not too hard because it is foam and push up and then you can get one side and then do the other. This is what it looks like. So again, pretty cool, I like it. What I'm gonna do about this though, I think, um, it does feel sturdy from the front all around, especially after that, after that adhesive dries, I think we're gonna be set. I'm gonna get like a little bit of um, double-sided, or not double-sided, some kind of foam sealer that they put like a around door edge like a really low profile one put it here to hide the little tabs and that's going to also give it a more smooth look which moves into the rest of the black of the honeycomb all right guys so that concludes the installation reinstall your uh your front bumper it's going to be kind of tricky you're going to like kind of want to angle it like this so that you can slide it under the uh, engine hood latch here and make sure all the holes are uh, lined up to the top, then push while holding the front. Make sure these are all lined up for you to push in. Of course, you're gonna lift that up like that. And then you're gonna push in this. So push in these first, either side to give you some support. Do the other side, push those in. And one trick I wanna tell you guys, cause I've done this so many times, is that you're gonna have certain underbody panels in here, which you want lined up. So this is what I'm talking about right here. The white is not supposed to show. The white is supposed to be like this, okay? It's supposed to be underneath the black paneling. So before you fully set in your bumper, because um, it's kind of hard to fix it otherwise, make sure none of those are, these will all slide under and be covered by the black. And then for the fog light covers, these are separate pieces of panel. Make sure they are not offset and make sure they are locked in like that, okay? And then you want to check along the whole front. Usually it's the front ones here that will get stuck uh, over and then that's a real pain. So looking over the whole bay here, I see that this looks pretty good. I don't see any white sticking out. Here we go, see this? 
don't want that sticking out so we want to shove that in there uh, nothing over there it looks good and we can set it in and it will just go right in and we don't have to worry once everything's lined up and already guys I'm pleased with how this looks it definitely looks more custom it feels nice and sturdy I mean for what it is I did put more adhesive over there so that side's gonna have to get more reinforced um, I mean once it dries it's tough though guys it really is liquid nails right so um, once I get the bumper fully set on I'll close the hood then we'll do a walk around but you can already see that looks pretty neat mindful of is make sure your wheel well liner from the front is inside okay so you want to make sure feel with your finger you can see right here and kind of push it in then as you work up to the top then close it up and then you'll know you have a nice good fit there All right okay that's one side done then you just work onto the other side then we'll put our fasteners back in essentially our bumpers back you pleased with this this looks very clean the wheels got the black there you could see the honeycomb just off the edge there I just wish we didn't have to have uh, front plates in California <laughs> because overall yeah I think this looks pretty cool let's go ahead and put on the lights yeah very nice Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed the swapping of the old bumper here from the 2014 Hyundai Elantra to a, to a mesh bumper. And as always guys, God bless you and always enjoy the drive.